Hey everyone, TFV in the, we gotta do a little short um, update on this truck. It's been a little while since I've been, uh, I parked it here last time. It's been a couple weeks since I've actually been able to get it fully um, running. Since it has a air uh, leak, fuel leak, between the switch that switches between the two tanks. Um, I've had, I've, uh, I've overheated this now, so I'm letting it cool off since it literally has no coolant. So since there's also a fuel leak uh, by the fuel filter underneath here, leaks down onto the manifold down there and the valve cover so it this is the big area where it leaks right here it either leaks around here or it leaks somewhere down there uh, i don't know but it, that's just one of the other things but um how you've how i've been starting this this last past few times is the solenoid has gone bad so what I have to do is take the two leads right here and take a screwdriver and do it directly to it to get it to start. So that, that's how I've been, ha I uh, have to start it from the inside of here. I have to turn the key first and then uh, come out here, let the glow plugs run. Oh, uh, I'll get to that in a second. And uh, I have to do the leads. Now what I mainly did just recently on here is I changed the spark plugs. And the hardest one to get to is one of these that go over these lines right here. The spark plugs look like these. I don't want to touch it since it's hot. those things right here there's one there, yeah it might have been this one that was the hardest to get to and then over there there's one there's some that up uh, there's one right there that's really hard to get under to, to change the spark plugs um i don't know but now it doesn't do that ticking noise anymore tick 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 after i replaced them all so it runs after replacing them so what it does is that uh, when you start it the first time, it'll run, it'll turn, start the first time, but then it dies off. So what I had to do to get it to start, since we have some diesel or kerosene or whatever laying around, I had to dump it down the intake and start it, and then it was able to start then. So that's the main, that's how I really got to start this time. But uh, let me go over to there, show you the speed um actually let, let me start it one more time for you guys so you can hear it run i know over well it looks like it's cooled down some but it's see it's overheated so what i'll have to do this ignition is going this ignition's going bad or something there we go you have to push in the key and the weight to start like goes on this goes off Good. that's because it's hot up oh, and then there's this stupid <laughs> what i have to do is go like this let me show you again Shut it off. Turn the key. Hoo hoo hoo, smoky. And then, let's see. Let's see if I can see it. And that's how it starts. All the diesel is nice and hot. That's 
smoking a lot more on camera, believe it or not. I can't see it. Boy, she is smoking. Oh, overheating again. There. Then, there's this thing that, where is it? Yeah, right here. I gotta push this in at the same time. So, I don't know if you guys will see it. I have to push this thing in, and then I can turn the key back all the way. And then take out the key. So it's kind of annoying. And then I'll show you five. Nice five speed. I'm really starting to learn really nice. It's really nice. It was really easy to learn how to drive a stick. If, if you and if any of you guys are wondering how hard it was, it was really easy to learn how to drive a stick. I'll I'll tell you. Even the thing goes ooh, 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 ooh. it on when you when you start going. When you come to a stop. I'll show you real quick. You kind of want to push in the hold on. You want to push in the clutch all the way before you, and then you easily push the brake in. Or how I see it is like if you if you're if you're this is this totally disengages the clutch from the the, the engine. So as you kind of ease on and on it. You, you're going slow. It's like right there is when it grabs. So kind of like right there it grabs. And then it grabs more and more. So you start off slow as you're down. And then you kind of go faster till it's fully engaged. Then you want, Now since it has a fuel leak, you have to give it a little bit of gas too. But you go down. Go down. And then you let off. And then before you want to shift, you want to fully depress it, shift down, and then give it some more gas. You know, you let off, then give more gas. You know, that's how it's kind of working for me. I'm not describing it the best, but that's how I'm describing it right now. But um, it works. Works pretty good. I don't know if this has the factory radio, if you guys seen it all. But, um... Between the fuel, two fuel tanks and everything, you know, that's right now. Um, I'll put in another part um, um, where the fuel leak, but it's the fuel selector from the two tanks joining together. And it's sucking in air right there also. And I'm best betting it's sucking in air from the fuel filter too, so it's leaking around there also. But, um... That's how that's how I start the truck, and it gets really annoying. So it needs um, radiator fluid, um, the the solenoid, fuel filter. We've got the <clears throat> we've got the rubber O rings for the fuel selector. Um, for the two tanks and the switch for sw switching the two let focus it's right here and it just switches between you can sort of hear like a little click in the back of the truck also and that switches the two yeah I'll leave it on that but it's located right around here underneath the frame so in a little bit i'll show you guys where it, the uh, other location is but it's still steaming um well i'll tell you a short story on this uh, story the original motor that came to this was in fact turbocharged and around 94,000 miles the engine just went out I, it didn't blow up or anything he doesn't my grandpa doesn't exactly know or remember what happened to the other one but he got this engine out of an ambulance it is not turbocharged so we do have the other turbo in this truck um, that right there is sit, sitting on a camper frame believe it or not and then right back there 
is a mid 70s uh, bus. And then you have the 70s John Deere right there in the long with the 99 Dodge Caravan. So we've got a lot of stuff around here also. My Firebird, the 2006 Freestar, the Brown Boat, the two yacht yacht things that one sunk before that one catched on fire they have the jaguar then there's a 67 catalina that was converted into a grand prix then in the way way far back can't maybe be able to see it but there's a porsche back there and what else is there oh there's the sunbird then we have customers boats then oh geez I'm going to have to show you this one. I'll come back to the truck in this one. Here's the Grand Prix with the uh, Pontiac 400. Oh, here we go. Here's uh, one other boat right here. The trailer. And then there's a boat right here. You guys may be able to tell what this is. It's been sitting for ages and ages. So this one is not getting restored or anything. It's just a car that's been sitting for a long time. Oh, it's a Porsche. 924. Huh. I'll see if I can open it. All right. Ooh, yuck. Ooh, you have to clean that off. Uh, caught the door open. Um, see if you guys can tell me what this, what type of Porsche this is. Here's what the mileage is. It might be 71,000 miles. Not exactly sure. Might be a four speed. Oh, so it still kind of goes in the gear. I wonder if the. Clutch thing come back up. The reservoir must be gone. I've never actually uh, touched this car this much, but it just uh, been sitting so long, become part of the part of the. Uh, have to get back to you guys again well I, i'm kind of rambling off but um if you want to com comment below if you want to see this porsche um and i'll take a look at it and here's this other cigna boat it's been sitting since 89 or the last registration expired in 89 it's been sitting here all these years also it's sinking the ground trees are growing in it there's this, there's this boat too. Same one. Oh, this one expired in 99. You can kind of see leaves. You know, I'll, I'll leave that for you guys to comment. Comment below if you guys want to, for me to take a, you around and I can show you all these boats and everything. I, want, I don't know what the what last registration date is on this one. But um, this one's for sale. It's a Catalina, like I said, with a Pontiac 400. Believe it or not, when my dad was a little kid, he was driven out to California in this this uh, this one. Um, it is for sale, and it has a 79 original thousand mile. Um, it's original engine and trans whatever. So it is a convertible. 
It's a red, it is all original. It, this is a Catalina converted into a Grand Prix. It's just a little tiny bit of rust. The only rust on this is the trunk, and that's not even that bad itself. So that's that. Here's this uh, Jaguar here. This one is totally rotted out to the floor, and so is the trunk. Um, I don't know if the, uh, that might be 125,000 miles. I'm not sure, entirely sure if it's the, you know, if that one's the tent. Uh, this one's been exposed to the elements for a very long time. I think it might be an 84. I'm not sure. And then this one's for sale also. It's a 73, I think. Um, it's a 73 silver line. Um, at least I don't know what type it is, but you can look it up. Um, it was not, even though this is 2014, it did not get on the um, lake that year. Then we have this sunbird over here. This one was taken out on the lake, but um, we had a lot of issues with it. They are pre, they were fixed, and now it is ready just to be registered and insured and ready to be driven out. This one's another customer's boat, and this one's been sitting here for years now. The guy just won't pick the dang thing up. That happened with another boat that was sitting here for a few years. This one needs a transmission. This is a known issue on these uh, vans. It doesn't have many miles. It is a Ford Freestar Limited 4.2 liter V6. It's got leather interior. It's got all the heated, well, everything, you know, for whatever that year. And then, uh, yeah, then you got the two boats here. I'll be back with you guys in a second. When we get to the other two boat, other two cars inside the shop. Wait. Um, oh wait, I almost forgot to add, uh, here's another jet ski. That's been sitting here for a while. The only problem with it is, I think somewhere in the hall is cracked. But I just wanted to add that before I get in and go inside. That's that. See you guys in a second. So I'm in the process of taking this special car off. You probably can't tell what it is. But it's a convertible. Take a look at the wheels. It's really covered up very well now. This just recently when the value of these uh, went up. But I'm just going to have to tell you guys because I think it's just like totally covered up. See, it's totally stripped down to everything. But it is a 1962 Jaguar E-Type convertible. It's got the glass covers for the top. And... Here is the motor. It's been sitting all these years and everything. You can kind of see the old part and everything. There's the front hood. It's been sitting up there pretty much my whole life. And there's the exhaust. Everything around it. Parts, parts, and parts. And then here we have the other Porsche. Same one. Better condition though.
back with you guys so I can turn on the flashlight. Okay. So I'm back. It's really, it'll, it'll kind of creep you out. It looks really weird. Same one. Same one, but inside. It's been in here for so long. Just layers of dust. Looks like it has 68,000, maybe 168. Oh my. Oh my gosh. Check that out. The keys have been here all these years and I just now pulled it out. That's incredible. Come on, focus. There we go. You get the you get the idea. It's been in so long. Oh. Oop. Are the wheels that go to it. And they're still good shape. And this one's holding air right now. No, no, no. Okay, yeah, never mind. Um, on the other side, you can still see dirt that's been in here all these years, too. Mm. Good sort it. Let's see. Yep. moves. I'll have to cover that back up. Push. We've got two transmissions right here for the white van. Back over oh, there. Sorry, this is a longer video up there. Right up there's the front bumper for it. Small dent right there. I'll show you a picture of what it would look like. So here's a general idea of what it would look like. It looks like that one up there, but in white. That's what it looks like. So this is a, yeah, kind of got a view of what you look, what you look out at after all these years. Yep. <laughs> Oh, so many memories. If you like this video, okay, I think I'm just going to end it right here. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And also comment below if you want to see more videos. I can do whatever vehicle. You just comment whatever you see in the video between the brown boat or any of the Jaguars. I've got one more. I've got another Jaguar sitting up the house. There's a house sitting up at front. There's another one that I guess you can show you. Click like this video if you want to see it. It's a 78 or 79 Jaguar. Com like this video if you want to see it. Comment below whatever if you want to see more of any of these vehicles. Oh. Well, before that, I'm going to... But anyway, I'll, I'll show you where it's leaking before I cut, uh, end out this video. But don't forget to like it and subscribe. Comment below. I think that's it. Get back to you guys in one more minute. This is all. I'll show you where this is leaking in this truck in the truck. And then that's that for this video. Okay. This is the fuel selector that uh sucks in the air underneath the truck. Let's see, there's the front, and there's the back. Here's one of the tanks, and one of the tanks are further back up there and here this is the frame rail right here and it leaks 
right here. So what I we got the rings and everything for each of the lines. You can see there's quite a few lines right here, and then got this electrical connection right here that probably shows what how much it's the tanks at or I don't know. And then you got a line right here that's pressurized. It's real thick. That's what she said. But anyway, um, that's all I wanted to show you guys. Um, also, you guys are going to have a surprise. Thank you for all the subscribers that... Here, I'll switch around. Thank you for all the subscribers. We've now hit, hit 100. And I'm going to upload another video. You guys are in for quite a surprise. I'm going to put on the battery from this truck that goes to my car. And you guys are going to like this. But other than that, this is TFD signing off. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I already said that. So I'm going to end this video right here. And that's that. See you guys in the next video.